Lewis, author and former Coots employee and somebody, when he was there, that was involved with business development. Oliver, um, saving the planet and promoting LGBTQ plus rights, how does that improve business performance? Well, being opened, open minded here, Nigel, I think there was a case of saying, obviously, there was public pressure to reflect societal changes. Um, I suppose the, the business decision is whether there is incremental uh, bottom line improvement. Now, given Coop's client profile, um, I would wager that probably focus on those topics won't result in a terribly massive bottom line improvement. You know, as you know, Nigel, a director of a, 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 of a company's responsibility is to the company, no one else. It is to the company. Uh, and I think that's where um, a lot of the problems of this issue are coming up against, um, not just, you know, uh, commercial reality, but legal reality as well. My case, Oliver, and perhaps in the case of many others, I mean, Coots have become a moral arbiter, you know, that somehow my views do not align with the values of the bank. I mean, they sound almost like a political party now. Yeah, I mean, it's um, when I was at Coots, politics, the organisation was not terribly political. There seems to have been a change, I think, more broadly in um, in the way our political and media elite wish to, and commercial elite indeed, wish to um, shape public debate so that it's top down rather than bottom up. You know, going back to those issues, to those topics you mentioned earlier, yes, there is some upward pressure from society as a whole, but a lot of this is coming top down yeah. from communications teams that have their own little agendas, human resources teams, you know, all of that. So that really is, is the disturbing thing, I think. Yeah, I think that's right. And actually, in many cases, they're minority views. There is a silent majority, a silent majority on many of these issues that would, that would, that would much rather Coots just stayed as a bank. What do you think, Oliver, will happen now? Well, I, I've been following this story closely um, and it just amazes me that Alison Rose would sit next to a BBC journalist at a dinner and discuss the private affairs of one of their clients. Um, it is public knowledge that there is there are several very high profile clients that Coots Banks, very, very high profile. Yeah. Um, uh, but just because it's public knowledge, it doesn't mean that you should sit next to a BBC journalist and discuss them. Uh, Alison Rose is not a novice. She's worked for NatWest Group all her life. She was a graduate trainee, joined in, I don't know, 1991 or something. You know, it's told you from the beginning in the banking industry, you, know, you never share personal details, okay? Even going on someone else's account that you have no justification to do is could result in dismissal. If a, if a cashier did that, they could be dismissed. If Absolutely. they were spying on their neighbours, you know, savings or whatever. So for the chief executive to do this is frankly absolutely outrageous. I mean, I still can't quite believe it. The other concern I have is that I suspect, obviously I can't prove this, but I suspect that West Group's communications teams would have briefed her. You know, all these senior executives, I used to write some of, write these briefs. Yeah. They're given a brief, they're told what to say. And that, for me, is the interesting dynamic now. What, what was NatWest Group Communications channeling to Alison Rose to drop into the conversation with uh, uh, it, 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 Oliver?